we'll see uh, what is negative binomial regression and how do we build uh, a negative binomial regression model uh, in R. So let's first uh, understand the theory behind a negative binomial regression model. Uh, this is a type of regression model that we use to, to model uh, count data. Uh, in this uh, channel, you might have gone through another uh, video on uh, Poisson regression and that's also used to model count data. So negative binomial uh, regression model is also used uh, to model count data. So how are the different? Uh, well, uh, we use uh, negative binomial uh, regression model to model count data only when the uh, the variance of the data uh, is high compared to the mean. So this is one condition that differentiate a Poisson regression from the uh, negative binomial regression. And we call that situation uh, or we call that type of data as over dispersed data. So this is uh, the main difference. Over dispersion is something that differentiate a negative binomial uh, regression from that of a Poisson regression. Uh, and remember one thing that uh, it's used mostly uh, to model uh, count data. Okay, to understand that, let's uh, take a case study and we'll solve that using uh, R. So, a researcher wants to study the attendance behavior of school students. And we have dependent variable as attendance of students. So, uh, the number of uh, days a, uh, students uh, you know, um, were absent uh, in the class. So that's for different students. And then we have independent variable as the type of program a particular student is enrolled to and the uh, score in maths. Okay, so there are two independent variables and uh, the dependent variable is uh, the number of days of absence uh, by a student. Okay. So here is the data. So we have just summarized the data using uh, summary. Now we have um, gender uh, for female and male and we have score on maths. So we're not going to use gender. So we'll only use two independent variables, uh, maths and a program one is enrolled to. And days absent is the dependent variable. So this is the dependent variable. And the two independent variable is, this one is independent variable one. This is independent variable. Two. All right. Uh, if you look at the distribution of the data, you can see that uh, this is a categorical variable. So the program you are enrolled to, a student enrolled to, is a categorical one. There are three different programs: general, academic, and vocational. Uh, so there are 40 general, uh, 40 students enrolled to uh, general programs, 167 in uh, academic, and 107 in vocational. And the, the variable maths is a continuous variable uh, and the days absence, which is a dependent variable, is again a continuous variable, right? Number of days somebody is absent, but that's a count, right? Because it cannot be, uh, you know, 20.5, right? It either can be 20 or you know, 30. So it, it has to be a count of something, count of number of days. So uh, that's exactly why we are using a negative binomial uh, regression model instead of a uh, normal regression model, right? So this is the distribution of the data. So we have got count of, uh, you know, the number of, uh, the count of uh, students with respect to the uh, days absent and that's, uh, we have, uh, you know, distributed uh, with respect to the different academic programs. The first one is for general, the second one is for academic, uh, and the third one is for uh, vocational, and the last one is overall. So when you combine all three. Uh, if you're familiar with negative binomial uh, distribution, uh, you would have already, you know, you would have already uh, understood the distribution, how it looks like. A negative uh, binomial regression models follows what is known as um, negative binomial distribution and that's exactly uh, more or less like this okay and you can see this distribution is followed in almost all section of this data whether it's uh, general academic or vocational 
Now this looks like uh, a negative binomial distribution uh, and that's one reason why uh, we have gone ahead with it. Of course it's a count data so from that itself uh, the two most popular uh, regression models used one is Poison and the other one is negative binomial. Uh, the second thing to look at is whether there is a dispersion or not and here there is a dis dis dispersion. You can see the mean of this data is very different from the uh, variance right wherever you have you know large uh, variance and you know the mean is much less compared to that you go ahead with a negative binomial distribution and here you can see very uh, easily the mean uh, wouldn't be you know more than somewhere here uh, and and the distribution uh, so the variance is you know spread across a very large region where the mean is much less okay so that is uh, the uh, the main reason why you are going out we're going ahead with negative binomial regression instead of a portion regression okay and you can verify that statistically also you just calculate uh, the mean and you know variance uh, of you know the data and you can easily uh, verify that uh, you don't have to do a distribution or, uh, graphically you may not uh, uh, be able to find it out but when you do when you compute the statistics you can uh, easily verify that so what are the methods that we can consider in such a case so one is a negative binomial regression the other one is portion regression i've already said third one is OLS regression with log transformation that means you take the log transformation of the dependent variable and then uh, build an ordinary square regression which is very normal multiple linear regression that also can be used okay uh, now the reason why we are you know ruling out poison regression is because there is over dispersion right over dispersion and what does that mean i'll just repeat um uh, the uh, variance uh, is much higher compared to the mean and that's uh, over dispersion and that's why we're going the first one which is negative binomial uh, regression so for the demo purpose, we'll go at the first one. You can of course build the third model, always regression with log transformation, and compare that with the negative binomial regression model. So how do we perform this regression? We'll use this command, uh, uh, this uh, function nb, which stands for negative binomial, and it's there in the GLM package. So uh, so GLM has many different package, uh, you know, functions. Um, GLM stands for generalized linear model and it, it has you know many regression models such as uh, linear regression, logistic regression and uh, many other different uh, types of regression models uh, which are part of GLM and negative binomial is just one part of GLM so or that one uh, type of GLM model. So we are using GLM.nb and the dependent variable is days absent, independent variables are maths and programs and the data that we are giving is uh, this one and when we run this we get this result and then um, yes so what is of interest to us is the coefficients and these are the one where which we we will interpret as part of interpreting the uh, results we also need to look at the uh, diagnostic statistics like deviance it has to be as minimum as possible um, and then uh, also the akaiki information criteria which also has to be as minimum as uh, if you possibly can have um, and then that helps actually you know finding out the best model out of a set of models so deviance and aic are the ones which 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 are going to be uh, compared across different models so let's say you have negative uh, you have poison regression and we have uh, an ordinary least square regression with log transformations so how do you come up with the best model for this given data well one way is you know to do more sort of exploration by uh, uh, you know uh, comparing the distribution of data and you know ma uh, de and deciding which one should be the best uh, the other other way you could be to compare the diagnostic statistics to compare the deviance uh, value or the compare the aic value and see uh, which one is giving the optimal results all right so how let's uh, now interpret the uh, coefficients now the independent value maths has uh, the standardized estimate the estimate as uh, negative 0.005 
okay so one thing is that um, somebody score on uh, somebody scoring high on mathematics is less likely to be absent so that's what it says okay whether it's, it's significant or not yes it is significant the value is less than 0.05 p value is less than 0.05 so it is significant at 95 percent confidence level uh, and then the second uh, independent variable is uh, the different programs we have got three programs program academic program vocational and the third one is what uh, program general right so program general is the reference category the reference category and program academic and program vocational have been compared to uh, reference okay now uh, this estimate which is negative 0.44 which is program academic which means that uh, if you if you take uh, the uh, difference of the effect because of program academic to that of program uh, uh, general the difference would be point uh, negative 0.44 similarly the difference would be negative 1.27 uh, when you take uh, program vocational with respect to program general okay all right so now having this in mind let's go ahead with uh, what we have received the insight that we have received from uh, the results so math is a statistically uh, significant uh, variable but we still don't know whether uh, program is statistically significant or not and we'll talk about it why it is not that easy or not that straightforward the marginal effect says that one unit increase in maths will change the log of count uh, of absence by 0 0.006 okay so that's the basic interpretation and the same interpretation can also be done with the other independent variable except the fact that you know there you have a categorical variable so there is a reference data so you always take the reference into account while interpreting uh, uh, you know, interpreting the uh, marginal effect for a given category. All right. So, uh, as you have said, the program one, which stands for program general, is a reference category, and all other categories have been compared. So, the other two categories have been compared to program uh, general. Okay. Now, do we? Uh, are you sure that whether this is significant or not? Now, if you look at the significant value for program academic is 0 0.01 which is significant here this is also significant but the significant the, the the estimates that we get here is nothing but on a comparison basis so this is program academic with program uh, general so this is more of a comparison and that is coming out to be significant but whether that variable itself is significant that for that we need another step okay we'll check the statistical significance of the second independent variable which is program by doing an ANOVA test so how we do is it we uh, build a model with uh, program uh, in place or program as one of the independent variable and then we'll build another model without the independent variable program okay so the first model which uh, the output of which is kept in m1 we build uh, the model like this we have the number of days of absence is equal to math score plus your program so this is model one second model one is simply with math score without having program okay now when you do an ANOVA we'll try to see if that makes a difference or not okay if the presence of program in the model is making a difference to the overall estimation okay estimation process okay if that does affect or that has significant impact on how we model uh, the number of days of absence of a student then that is a significant variable else not if there is not much of a difference in these two models in program is not a very significant variable and how do we do that we actually um, you know use the ANOVA function and that will do a li likelihood ratio test 
uh, for the two models, for the two negative binomial models. And all you need to do is look at the p-value. And you see that it's, it's significant, right? Its value is 1.65 raised to the power e to the power minus 10. So that's less than 0.05. Hence, this is significant, which means there is a significant difference here. Okay, so there is a significant difference between the model 1 and the model 2, M1 and N2. That means program, the independent variable program has a significant effect on the model or it is a very significant model because it is making a difference to the two models. Okay, and that's the reason, main reason why these two models are different because there is a presence of program in the first model and that's a significant uh, variable. That's how we confirm it. Okay. And once we confirm it, the interpretation can be done from the first model itself. So we can interpret uh, the output by looking at these two uh, coefficients for program. All right. Now, few precautions uh, needs to be taken while building a negative uh, binomial regression model. Firstly, it should not be used for small samples. So you should have a reasonably uh, large number of sample size in order to be able to use a uh, negative binomial regression model. Secondly, you should also confirm for over dispersion um, and, and if there is over dispersion of zeros, then uh, it will look like, uh, you know, an over dispersed distribution. However, because, you know, there will be more zero, so it will be, if it is zero here, so there will be a lot of zero here and then the other values, this will look like an over dispersed dispersion. Um, over dispersed uh, distribution, but uh, you should not use negative binomial distribution in this case. Okay, you rather should use zero inflated regression where there are a lot of zeros, and we'll see uh, what zero inflated regression is in, in another video. But uh, wherever you have too many zeros in your data, you might uh, mistake that as. Uh, um, or misjudge that as over dis uh, dispersed distribution, but although that you know by definition it is, but uh, in that case you should be more careful. You should rather use a zero inflated regression instead of a negative binomial regression model. So, uh, third thing is the outcome variable should always be non-negative because it is a count of something, and count of something cannot be negative. So ensure that this is this is the case. So the dependent variable cannot cannot be a non-negative value, and that is a limitation also. But when you take the logarithm of it, it can actually have a negative values, and then the the uh, you know distribution data would be throughout the negative side and the positive side. Okay, so count of something has to be uh, positive all the time. So make sure that the dependent variable is positive. And if it is, if it has any negative value, you cannot go ahead with using uh, negative binomial regression model. Okay, what are the real world uses of this model? The real world uses can uh, be in many industry, uh, such as banking, uh, in, in main industry, in many activities. Uh, in banking analytics, you can uh, model for count of default customers for different market segments. Uh, count of uh, you know, good customers uh, in different market segments. Uh, for marketing analytics, you can also use a negative binomial regression model. Um, you can use uh, for you know for the for the dependent variable or to model count of repeat customers from different geographies. Okay. Uh, in HR analytics, you can see count of employees acquisition across levels. So. Wherever you have count data and you feel that uh, there is over dispersion uh, or, or the sample vari uh, the variance is more, more than the, uh, the mean, then you can go ahead and use negative binomial regression model. And there could be many other cases where you know this could be also useful. Thank you.